oh you know this is phase one in getting uh paul out of here and we're live hey, hey. everybody hey how's it going <laughs> how hey, is it everyone. going everyone welcome to another live episode of fandom social <laughs> is I it <laughs> I'm Are you hearing sure? an <laughs> echo. Hold on one second. Give me one quick second. I'm hearing we'll an echo. We'll talk amongst ourselves. <laughs> yeah, you guys take it. <laughs> Unless our talking our affects your there echo. There it is. I had YouTube open and it was playing a 30 second delay of our stream. So Perfect. I found it. I closed it. We're going to start all over again. You hey, use everybody. Your brain. That's all. Okay, go for it. I'll be quiet. We are live. Thank you so much for joining us. Welcome to another live episode of Fandom Social. Um, I am Autumn and I am joined by a couple of faces you guys may recognize from a past episode, loyal viewers. Uh, we've got Troy and Mike here from Bald Guys and Bad Movies. Say hello, hello. guys. Hello. How are you guys so doing? We, uh, you. we are going to be doing something a little special today. Um, we are going to be doing a show within a show today. So right now, Troy and Mike are guests of our show, Fandom Social. But in just a few minutes, I'm actually going to turn the uh, driving wheel. <laughs> driving wheel well, you, and you, the race. <laughs> you coined a really great phrase earlier today. Yeah. Was it? Was it? Oh, I've got the. You ready? You ready? Yeah, yeah. This go is going to be called uh, a. Uh, this uh, is uh. going to be a showception, everyone. That's right. Yeah, I like it. <laughs> Right now we are watching Fandom Social, but in just a couple of minutes, I'm going to hand the reins over to Troy and Mike, and they're going to be doing an episode of their podcast, Bald Guys and Bad Movies, where I am going to be a guest on their show. Then they're going to hand the reins back to me after the top stops spinning or something. I don't know if I forget how that works in Inception. There's like a top that tells you what by, by the way, dream you're in. <laughs> for the, the edited version for our podcast, I'm going to drop some yeah. Nolan horns throughout this. <laughs> Wah. Perfect. Wah. Yeah. <laughs> we'll give it the gravitas. Yeah. yeah. So they are going to take over as hosts, and I will be the guest, and then we're going to switch it back to me, and I'll uh, end the show as the host again. We're going to go I back to I think we should do so every so. single portion of the show. Everyone. Like, we'll do it once, yeah. like, as, like, a test run, and then we'll do it yeah. again, like, yes. 30 seconds later. <laughs> I think it would be fun if in the middle of your show, you guys say, and now we're going to have an episode of Fandom Social in the middle of our show, and then we'll switch it back. <laughs> <laughs> and we'll do like a trivia round about that'd the, be, that'd the be show. Good. I like it. I like I it. I love it. <laughs> oh my gosh. Okay, guys. As you can see, Paul is not here. So we're already starting the unhinged part of the show. Wait, early. why is Paul not here? What's the conspiracy? What is the. Yeah. Is, uh, is um, there, did you have a. Yeah, he doesn't, falling out? He doesn't you like you guys. No, out? he's not in fans. <laughs> huh? Yeah. <laughs> Appalling even, out. Yeah, even yeah. with all my all my you know love of his beautiful hair. <laughs> I know. Like, yes. Honestly, Mike is so disappointed. <laughs> he was so enamored with no. that mane he had. That mm. mane of, he had some good hair. He Paul, had some good hair. Silver Paul fox. is out there being iconic somewhere. Who knows what he's doing? But he couldn't make it tonight. So it's gonna be us. Um our producer Daniel's gonna be joining us in a little few minutes, uh by, backstage helping us out with some links and things like that. But uh um, we've got the audience here, too, so they're going to be participating. You guys are also going to be guests of this show. Um, and today we are going to be breaking down a movie, uh, Green Lantern, from 2011? Uh, 2000, uh, maybe 2012 or something yeah, like 2011, that. 2011, 12, yeah. So we're going to be breaking down that movie. We've got things to say. I've got notes. I've got yeah. thoughts. I got a couple notes, I too, too. I got some notes, too. I took yeah, notes. look, we all took all notes. Right. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So... Hopefully, you guys in the audience had a chance to watch the movie to prep for this. And uh, do we have any further ado? Do you guys have any ados before we switch? No, over? let's uh, let's get started. Okay, so I am going to turn the driving wheel <laughs> over to you guys now. <laughs> All right, Autumn, just sit over okay. there. You've been drinking okay, too here we much go. Again. Ready? Okay, yeah, exactly. here we go. I'll take the go. wheel. It's all now. yours now. Go for it. Oh my God! Just just get some rest. We'll talk. Do about it, Troy. Do do the thing. Do the thing, Welcome Troy. to Ball Guys and Bad Movies, episode 74. I am Troy, here with my buddy, Mike Stella, and the interruptress, Autumn. Autumn. I didn't, inter <laughs> I didn't interrupt. I waited. <laughs> Wait, I, I got it wrong. It was interruptress. What was it? Unleashed. Unleashed. <laughs> yes. Because you, because were telling us, said, uh... you were telling us, Autumn, look, this is going to be a liberating episode for you, Autumn. 
No you can interrupt you whenever you want. Hold back. Feel free to be rude and interrupt because likely whatever you have to say is way more intelligent, profound <laughs> than what me and Mike will have to say. Okay? Uh, I feel uh, like there's people in the audience right now yourself. that are saying, guys, no, do not do this. Do not <laughs> unleash. You don't know what you're asking. Oh, uh, <laughs> I'm just curious we know. to see it happen now. We know. Yeah, like, I'll make yeah. strategic choices about interrupting. How about that? Okay. Be, be strategic okay. or just be blunt. Either way. Either um, way. Well, welcome, Autumn and Autumn's audience, to this episode of Ball Guys and Bad Movies hash slash fandom social. Um, we're going to run this like we would our normal podcast. Except we have a guest. Except we have a guest. And a live um, audience. And, and a, live a live audience. audience. That's so awesome. This is kind of you fun. know, <laughs> except for that. Just like our normal, same. just like our, just the same. It's the yeah, same. There There's go. no difference. <laughs> um, so, guys, what are we reviewing this week? This week, we are reviewing the 2012 hit superhero film, The Green Lantern. 2011. We are reviewing the aggressively mediocre 2011 <laughs> film Green Lantern. Wait, wait, don't don't give it away. Don't give it away. Hold. Come on. Geez. You can cut that part <laughs> out. No, no, no. no. <laughs> Not from the live stream. We can't. No. Nope. <laughs> uh, so Green Lantern. Before we, I guess I should describe this. This is what normally we would do. Yeah. Right? Why don't you give it a? Why don't, yeah. Why don't, why don't you give it a nut? How about let's have Autumn do a nutshell. Give it. Oh, give us yes. Green Lantern in a nutshell. Autumn. Now Mike gives the best nuts of all. <laughs> His nuts are short and spicy, and, and not always to the point. Sometimes they <laughs> dribble out. They, there's, there's a little dribble, but you know <sighs> he gets there in the end. So no sometimes, pressure. Sometimes. But can you summarize <laughs> Green Lantern? <laughs> can't it was so forgettable i had to keep going back and watching parts of it going wait what happens here green lantern okay the guy i have things to say about it how can i summarize it that's green that lantern. She, she does a better nutshell than me i will say that i know it's, <laughs> it's a superhero movie you know it's like uh, let's put all the tropes together put it in a blender mix it up spit out a superhero movie that's trying to compete with who iron man did really well people love superhero movies let's do the same thing i mean Come on. <laughs> Perfect. Okay. I know there exactly we go. what that film's about. If I just exactly. landed on planet Earth, I would know exactly what we want. Exactly. We're gonna roll with that. <laughs> okay. Um so what did you guys think of Green Lantern? Well, did, before well, we get into spoilers for well, those let's out do our there I mine it. is a not not a recommend. Definitely not a recommend. Yeah. It's mm -hmm. uh there's so much other stuff to waste your time watching that is also a waste of time, but even better to do it with so now, now before you go further now we all saw it when it was first released in 2011 yes and now we're seeing Somewhere it years around. later i probably yeah. have not watched this film yeah. since 2011 yeah probably has not it, has it improved changed has your perspective changed at all in this film? i forgot all about it so it was like watching it again for the first time there's only one I... scene that was memorable because it was funny because ryan reynolds and after that i forgot Mm -hmm. I also want to give a uh, Laura what scene was that? over. I want to. I want to know, hey, I'll come back to it. Okay, I, I don't want to forget Laura's... that. Okay, <laughs> we have Laura in the live audience. She gave her summary, which I think is perfect. Green Lantern is a movie. Stuff happened. There was a Green Lantern. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Perfect. All, all three acts are represented there. Act there I love you go. It. Yeah. <clears throat> the only part to me that was memorable was um, when. He's there with his friend showing off his lantern and his ring, trying to show off his powers, and nothing happens. Uh, Taika Watiti. Like a... Taika Watiti. Yeah. Yes. His friend. Did you? Which I you... forgot. I had no idea. I was like, holy what? shit, that's Taika Watiti. Yeah, because he wasn't, he wasn't Taika he wasn't Watiti Taika back Watiti. then. Yeah. He was so young and, and not Taika yeah. in my mind. Like, oh right. my God. So that oh was God. a fun scene that I did remember that it happened because I remember that being like, kind of funny you know he's trying to show off his powers and nothing happens and i remembered that literally nothing else well I, I will say um and when i first saw it first of all mark strong's the hero this like he is mm -hmm. so yeah. great as sinestro i wanted more yeah. of him steve um, nara in the chat said in all honesty the best thing about this movie uh, is mark strong's performance as sinestro yeah that's 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 yep yeah dead on uh Richards says, I'll watch it just for Sinetro and his scenes. So absolutely. Yeah. 
So what, yeah, what do like you think him. about Ryan Reynolds though? He's good I mean, in everything though. I mean, I mean, Mark's wrong. I mean, he's, he's, he's yeah. Ryan Reynolds. Yeah, yeah. He is he is Ryan Ryan Reynolds in everything he does, basically, which is delightful, and I love it. And he was Ryan Reynolds in this. He was great. No no notes. He was fine. So is this a hard no to anyone who's never seen Green Lantern to don't bother, forget about it. There's well, no redeeming qualities. I wouldn't say. Do a you hard recommend? No. Yeah. I would say right. if you got your iPad out and you want to play a little, you know, match game <laughs> while you have something on in the background, this is mm -hmm. a perfectly good thing to have on in the background. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Okay. Does it demand your, uh, I think Mike and I, we had an analogy. If you had it on at a party, <laughs> It's right. good back, okay. a good background movie to have on. We have a social Steve, gathering. Steve Nara in the chat says, two guys, a girl, and a Green Lantern. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Ryan Reynolds was in two guys, a girl, and a pizza place. So. Oh, oh, right, right, right. There you <laughs> yeah, go. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um, I love it. So, and Mike, we, uh, uh, not recommend for you? Uh, my, you know? Look, mine is a, is not recommend. I mean, it's... Look, if you're if you have a hankering for some Green Lantern, you know, <laughs> content, sure. I mean, but I they plus I don't we know. use the word hankering, by the way. Yeah, I love yeah. it when yeah. It's aggressively it's mediocre. It's fine. It's absolutely perfectly fine. Yeah. I, I wouldn't even say that it's fine. Like it's it's it is boring. Like it is <laughs> it is a boring movie. Well, uh, okay, let's let's just get into it. Well, what your what's your what are you about you Troy? Are you a a hard no or a it's not irredeemable? There, uh, uh, Peter Sarsgaard I think gave a good performance oh. or over the I top mean, cheesy performance yeah. as the Hector with um, with what he had to work with. Yeah, with what he had right. to work with, even though he looked like a giant testicle. That's <laughs> even though that character was totally unnecessary. <laughs> Elephantitis man. Um, right? Like, but uh, yeah, for me the middle part and look. The structure of this movie, and I think we could all agree, the movie needs a lot of work. The middle part, second act, was that's where the boredom set in. Yeah. I, I felt like this movie should have been a buddy cop movie. Should have been Green Lantern paired with Sinestro, learning the ropes. I mean, there was no training. Yeah. Like, he, he had one little fight with the big guy. I forget the big guy's name. And then he mm -hmm. uh, Sinestro hurt his feelings, and he flew back to Earth. Yeah. And there was a whole chunk of him in Earth. I almost wonder if Guardians of the Galaxy had come out first before this, like this version. And they had that movie. as like yeah. a would like they've been more confident yeah. to yeah. have him just be in space for most of this movie? Yeah, and right. be a space cop. Well, I, I have a whole theory after watching it that mm -hmm. when I was watching it about halfway through, I went wait a theory of holes or in, no th just that this is Top theory. Gun. Okay, this movie is just Top Gun, like they borrowed heavily from elements of Top Gun and there were so many scenes that paralleled Top Gun scenes. And I feel like, like th toward the beginning of the movie, we've got um, in the in Top Gun, he's on his motorcycle driving recklessly all over the place Wait, to now, arrive now and he's I, late. I want a Sinestro volleyball scene. Sure <laughs> yeah, <looks>. Absolutely. <laughs> uh, I think everyone is here for that. Yeah, that. yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. Okay. And Sorry, like, there's that scene and the same, like the, both of them have this scene where they're careening around irresponsibly through the streets to get there and they show up and they're kind of devil may care, too cool to care about it. Same thing, same character. And then they're doing some kind of test where they go beyond the boundaries of what's safe just to prove that whatever it is wasn't working. And there's and then they have this love interest who is like, it's blurring the lines of what's professional and what's not. And like right. And they're only existing, that love interest only exists to be a love interest. They have no actual character of their own. <laughs> like there's so many things that happen and they've got this memory of this dead person who like their father and they're trying to live in the shadow of them. Like it's the same story. And I feel like they didn't, my complete opinion, I'm not basing this on anything, but my instinct is they didn't have faith in that time that a superhero film could draw a big enough audience or that people would like the film because that MCU wasn't this monster juggernaut that it is now. Like Iron Man came out, huge hit, and but like our PR audience is really going to invest and like this. I don't think they had faith in it. And so I think they mm. borrowed from a highly successful story Mm -hmm. and tried to make it that so that it, people it, who necessarily weren't into it would still think it's cool but it was a watered down version of it and that's and that's kind of what i mean i think you hit it because if guardians had come out if they just waited 
and that was a massive hit, then they would have confidence in right. embracing the, sci the sci fi element of this and the weirdness of it. Yeah. But it yeah. felt like we don't want to be too weird for too long. So let's put it right. back on planet Earth. So let's make it a cool fighter pilot show yeah. movie instead. The house got it. We got to get back to Earth because people can connect to the Earth stuff. And out <laughs> We've there, got it's just Steve, too weird. Steve Nara says, I feel the need, the need for green. <laughs> <laughs> and Laura says, Sinestro flexing to look at his watch. <laughs> <laughs> see, no one can see it now. <laughs> yeah. um, well, uh, I mean, that's are a you, pretty, are that's you that's a pretty good the... point, I would say, like oh, the whole ahead, Top right. Gun uh you know, facsimile, because mm -hmm. now that you mention it, it really does kind of feel like that. And th there was so much in it that just like it, it seemed really odd that this guy is a professional test pilot. And all of a sudden in this one particular flight, that's when the memory of his his father like really messes him up. Like, yeah, it just seemed really. It seems like he dumb. would have conquered that demon by the time you he think, got to that point in his career. You think so? Yeah, maybe, <laughs> yeah. maybe. <laughs> and you know what occurred to me because the opening just is like ep exposition, right? The, the right. ominous right. voice. And I love how Guardians open up the first one. It started with the human part, which is Peter Quill, right? And the night he lost his mother. Yeah. But that's that's super confidence, right? Like right. at that point. You know these movies, uh, there's an audience for it. So you don't have to start with like a, a, a bang right. or you could start with an emotional bang, right? Right. Yeah. So it's almost like if they had started with him as a kid yeah. and really showed that impact that it had, then it may have made more sense for that. You know, it's a reoccurring thing. It is a traumatic thing. But we, but like you said, it was a weird placement for it, Mike. Like yeah. A flashback right in the middle I mean, does this always yeah. happen? Did they ever say that in the film? He's always like, yeah, zoning out. I don't know. I can't remember, but yeah, it was it was definitely odd to me. Like I was watching it, oh. thinking this is completely out of <laughs> the norm for a you know super hot shot pilot. Yeah. Um, oh, we've got Steve Nar in the chat says it's also very odd that this is from the same director of Mask of Zorro. The vibes are so different, yet should be the same pulpy goodness. But yeah, I think yeah. it missed the mark. Martin Campbell is the director, and he directed Casino Royale, which I friggin' love. So it's... those are like juicy, great stories, campy and great, and delivers. Well, and this one, I, I, mean, I don't mean you... campy, but I mean it delivers on its genre. You right. know what I mean? How do you guys feel about the Arrowverse? Because the guy behind that watched. wrote this, Greg Berlanti. I, I never uh, got into it. Okay, the CW yeah. stuff. The CW stuff. I mean, I watched Smallville, like, sadly. I watched Dawson's but... Creek. Does that count? <laughs> kind of. Kind of does. Okay. <laughs> because I think a lot of what we're saying is in the writing. And this had, right. and, yeah. you know, this had a ton of rewrites, so I'm not just going to blame him. Uh, it had, probably had a ton of studio meddling. I blame him. Okay, <laughs> fine. <laughs> Screw that guy. I hate him. Yeah. <laughs> he can take it. Um. So, uh, did you guys have a favorite part? Well, what's a redeeming quality? What are the, what what does this film get right, if anything? Uh, what does it get right? That's a that's a good. I can't think of. I, I really cannot. I mean, it was it was pretty damn bad. From... Which characters were compelling? How about that? Did you do you felt mm. for like Sinestro? I mentioned Mark Strong. Yeah, character. well, Sinestro was. I, I, was I mean, I think. Yeah. Okay, but I think to be fair, if somebody walked into that movie and just watched that, not having known about the comics, nobody would have cared about Sinestro. We like mm -hmm. Sinestro because we like the comic book character. But mm -hmm. that particular version of Sinestro, I don't, he was, I don't agree, and... but I don't agree with that. I think it's no. kind of the opposite. I feel like you, if you walk no. into this movie and you know nothing about it, you're going to like Sinestro because Mark Strong mm. is so. Like I like him in everything I see him in. Like I, I can't right. think of a single like. Even if the movie is forgettable, I will remember him most of the time. Because that, that's okay. and again, because Mark, you're right. Mark Strong gets such a strong performance that him paired with Ryan Reynolds for most of this movie, hmm. like it's, it's like been. Lethal Weapon or it's a, yeah. again a bloody cop movie, right? It was a missed where, opportunity for sure. Yeah, like oh, I got to yeah. take this rookie and my partner died and. 
you know, that makes right. one piece of comedy. They set him up as sure. like an antagonist, sort of like, I don't like you because you, how dare you fill the shoes of the guy? Right. You're not worthy. But like, he would have felt that way about anyone. Exactly. You know, so like, they set up this kind of very weak premise of they don't like each other, and now they do. And it's like, okay, cool. Like, it was <laughs> such a. No one it cares. It was so limp. Their, Nobody cares. Their, their relationship <laughs> line was so limp. Yeah. And it could have yeah. been, like you're saying, it could have been really great yeah. if they had paired them more. And it, they didn't earn his his turncoat to yellow at the end. Like the mm-hmm. the, the end credit stinger mm-hmm. when he embraces mm-hmm. fear. Sinestro. There was nothing yeah. leading up to that. Yeah, like how, how, did he, how yeah. did he break like, his fear? When he, did that happen? At the end, he was like, yay, Hal Jordan's just proven that, you know, you know, we're great. <laughs> yeah, that that was absolutely odd to me. Like, yeah. oh, now, oh, yeah, all of a sudden, yeah, we need to harness the power of fear. Like, didn't, he literally like... just got done telling you <laughs> about what happens when you do that. Right. And, I feel like, like that'd be like if Thanos just, like, got one of the rings because he found it on the ground. I mean, one of the stones. Right, <laughs> You're right, like, right, oh, God. here's a stone. You know, like, right. okay. Oh, Wait we got a. a... I got a kooky idea. <laughs> oh we got Jin Edwards in the chat that said the best thing to come out of this movie is the availability of plastic lantern rings. <laughs> yes, nice. uh, we can ask Paul. He's got a set of all of them and enjoys wearing them all at the same time. So. Oh my god. <laughs> yeah, because we uh, we got them when we worked at the comic book shop together. Oh, and then no. when they were making these promotional rings, That's so. Cool. <laughs> it was Wait, autumn great. is so in that closet back there is a closet full of light. Like, lantern gear you open if i it, open that up it's just out. lantern rings that are gonna pour out yeah oh, that's fine. thousands cut of out them him his tidy whities <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right, yeah, you know, one seat. thing that was really <laughs> weird in this movie aside from the, the the story the writing just the colors and the the way it looked was just so odd like it was it just dropped into black so fast. Like the, it was so high contrast that it almost like was in uh, like undefined. Like it was really yeah. weird. It wasn't weighted in. Yeah. It didn't feel weighted in reality, even yeah. though obviously it's not reality, wanted, but it didn't feel like it existed to, to like, to, cause all their costumes were CGI, right? Like uh, um, you think, I mean, yeah. So I wanted, mm-hmm. Hey, look exactly. That. Yeah. <laughs> Got on you screen. think so? That. Wait, that's how Mark Strong actually looks? <laughs> <laughs> yes, oh that's why they cast him. <laughs> he needs a blend in that fade, though. I, oh, I got a good man. barber. I used to have a good barber. Anyway. Absolutely. Um, yeah, maybe it was done to disguise that, that yeah. everything was fake. And, and not only that, like, why was Ryan Reynolds and Blake Lively so tan? They were so <laughs> tan. I was like, this is because so they are weird. The beautiful people, and it's yeah. their job. <laughs> you know what? And that's actually, I'm glad you brought that up because it really emphasized the point that these. Be- <laughs> and look she's gorgeous he's gorgeous they're absolutely yeah. gorgeous people. and they fell in love with this film right i, I just assumed. yes they did i assume they did yeah i think yeah. that's the best thing to come out of this movie, that is their absolute, beautiful family that is I was, absolutely i was watching thing. like i wonder is this the scene where they kind of fell for each other hmm. yeah. yeah totally love kiss, but kiss, but kiss. <laughs> what i really thought was inter- interesting is it really drives home that Beautiful people are the heroes. And yes. Hector, even before he became a bad guy, he was already like hunched over, had a horrible like receding yeah. hairline. So he, he deserves and they were, like, to be the, the villain. Old, yeah, exactly. <laughs> if you're ugly, you're bad. You are inherently yeah. a bad person if you're right. ugly. And if you're gorgeous, you're inherently a good person. Right. And I, I was and they, very, I was like, this is kind of and they made him less attractive than he is in real life exactly like they made him and also can we just talk about tell me if anyone disagrees they could have taken that character completely out and it wouldn't have changed a single thing about absolutely this movie the scene where he causes the helicopter that could have easily been just a random accident that then green lantern comes in to save like a train could have gone off the rails you know what i mean it could have been anything and he could have made his first rescue in public and it didn't have to be Hector. And Hector could have just never existed. And it was fine. And the Tim Robbins character or whatever, well, the, his dad, 
didn't need to exist either. Like Here's none of this reason... needed to exist. Well, right? I, 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 agree. I do. I do feel like he needed to exist. Maybe not in this this form. Like I, I, I agree with you, Mike. Like they were so on the nose that loser, loser, yeah, exactly, loser with powers. He can't get a girlfriend. Wait, loser. I need to, I need to jump back one second. Uh, Dwayne says about our two lead characters, great method acting. They're still in character years later. Nice. <laughs> Got married nice. and had kids. They They're are dedicated the to their craft. Yeah. <laughs> to the Daniel Day Lewis yeah. method acting. And uh, Steve Nara says Peter Sarsgaard takes me out of any movie. He's such an odd dude. Ooh, Interesting. But but my favorite comment <laughs> in the last. <laughs> Look at him. Look at him. He's got a bigger forehead than Sinestro. Oh my gosh. <laughs> amazing so bad my favorite but my favorite comment right uh recent comment is you have a great barber they take a hundred percent off (laughs) (laughs) oh yeah you get it you guys because there's no hair do you get it shoot no all these years i never had a ball joke there we go it finally happened Thank you. Thank you. And you know what? That's the kind of value that we provide here at Fandom Social. It's good, yeah. good value. Fandom yeah. Social. Fandom uh, Social. Oh, I like that. What were you saying? What was I saying? I oh, uh, <laughs> so the what was the the big fog monster? Um, oh God! He has a five head. <laughs> 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 That's good. <laughs> <laughs> oh he man! Reminded me of someone. I was watching a movie last night. I couldn't quite peg it. I feel like it, he reminds me of someone in popular culture, but maybe not. I don't know. Is it me? Uh, I'm very big right. in popular culture. I'm very famous. No, 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 no. Is it me? <laughs> no. Okay. Well, so what'd you guys think of Parallax? Because the reason I like, I thought a Hector was needed because Parallax is such a weak. Basically, he's he's fighting pollution, a pollution cloud. He's fighting the the smoke monster from Lost. You know what I mean? It's like yeah. It's, yeah, it's you, it's you fine. He's just a big CGI beast. He, right, he, you can't undervalue yeah. acting against an actual person, right? Yeah, as the villain, right? So right, like the Galactus from uh, from Silver Surfer, basically. I mean, oh, I right. agree they did with the same you. Thing with Galactus, right? Yeah, they did yes. the same thing with Galactus. Now, Parallax, who gives a shit, right? But ruining right. Galactus, that <laughs> shit was unforgivable. Yeah. I will I say that. I think you're right, Troy, that they did need to have a human, some a villain with more, some kind of character, some kind of something to fight. They just didn't do it well with Hector. Da- it didn't Thanos deliver was either. The first like CG villain that I felt, and maybe it's because. He was executed so well that it was a full. It didn't blown take character. me out of it, right? Right. I felt like he was actually in the scene. Absolutely. For any other movies or lesser movies, it always didn't. Takes Josh me out. Brolin get plastic surgery to make that happen? Wasn't that real? His chin? <laughs> no. With the, That's not the scrotum, real. The scrotum on his <laughs> scrotum chin. The scro the scro chin. Yeah. The pre- yeah. Pre- chin. Grimace. <laughs> My favorite yeah. is pictures from set where it's like him wearing the CG suit with like a stick. And like a yeah. Thanos head on the edge of it, so they have a correct <laughs> eye line. Yes. I love that shit. Uh, it kills me. Oh, we've got Steve says, uh, remember I when do Clark remember that. fought the cloud version of Darkseid in the finale reminded me of that. Yeah. But did he really fight him or did he just kind of like he just kind of like showed like started flying there and then that was the end of the show, right? Like he didn't actually fight him. That's like yeah. the first time you see him in the suit. And I was just like, are you kidding me? You, you see him. That's very. Exactly. Yeah. You see, like yeah. the, the 17, <laughs> 17 pixels of Superman off in the distance. <laughs> I was so pissed about yeah. that. Dude. Me too, dude. Yeah. Back when I cared. That was a train wreck caring. of a show because I just, I don't know why I kept watching. Laura Kilo says, man, clouds are jerks. There are, you know what? Let's talk about the top five cloud villains in Ugh. TV and movie history. Definitely the smoke monster from Lost, mm-hmm. for sure. And then we've got Parallax. Who else is a cloud monster? Galactus. Galactus. Um, I would probably say, do, do shadow clouds count? Sure, yeah. I would say Melisandre's demon Ooh. baby from Game of Thrones. Yeah. The cloud is... from Nope. 
That's a good one. Oh, like yeah, like there was something in the cloud, but like that was Didn't the cloud was the sky. wasn't darkness like a cloud? <gasps> oh, yes, that was that, good but, one. Wasn't was that? Ooh. Oh, that was a never ending story. That was a dark. Uh, Steve but, says no. Carpenters, the fog, yeah, oh. and the and maybe the mist the from mist? Stephen King's mist. Yeah, yeah. the mist. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> John Galgano says now I'm seeing old men shaking their fists at clouds. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Damn you, cloud! <laughs> <laughs> Oh my oh, gosh, man. Steve Nara maybe, says maybe it, could, it was it could be a the cloud emotions. cinematic universe, right? They just I think we should have a show that. all about cloud villains. Yeah. Well, exactly. didn't the guy who played Clark wasn't he in the re in in Smallville? He was in the remake of The Fog Tom years Welling? later. Yeah, yeah, Tom he Welling, was. he was in the so look, it all comes yeah. back together to the Smallville. <laughs> Simba's father. father. <laughs> that would be Mufasa. Mufasa. That would be Mufasa. But is he a villain? I mean, I think he's maybe the no, first cloud yeah, hero oh yeah he's a cloud hero yeah not he's a cloud first. hero like he's zeus first, from hercules or, the movie that i had a live obi-wan kenobi obi-wan kenobi, obi -Wan kenobi. Is he a cloud? He's a, i mean he's not a person i mean he's a you know he's an apparition <laughs> he looks kind of soft on the edges jen wants to know if the guy in the suit from hellboy 2 counts Ooh, <laughs> good call i yeah. like that i think he does this he took a does. turn i was not what about expecting the chamber eruption in ghostbusters this I mean, took a turn you out. asked for this autumn i you love it no asked Let's i was go meaning over all the clouds what i mean was pop culture. this took a turn i was not expecting <laughs> and i love it like i love it i know you Laura says um in, in obi-wan wheel again Obi okay, Laura Obi says Obi-Wan is not a cloud. Let's fight, fight, fight. <laughs> Hot take, Mike. Go for it. I don't I, I, I have no I have no dog in this race, sir. Horse in this race, dog in this fight. That those are it, right? I guess you can have dog race dog races, right? I want to see those. a dog horse. Dog. I want to see a horse fight. <laughs> there we go. I That's see called a jousting. Fight a shark. I want it all. <laughs> no, just the horses fighting. <laughs> yeah. But they just strap. Wait, the no, the dog the is the jockey oh. on the horse. There we Susan go. Susan is right me. in Ghost. Remember hey, when the, the demons mom. come to like pull away? They come to pull oh, away to to hell. Mm, the ghosts who are bad. That's a good one. Yeah, good Whoa, job, what, what Mike's about mom. The poltergeist storm. Remember that scene in Poltergeist? <laughs> oh, oh yeah, yeah. Mm, absolutely. This is great. Absolutely. <laughs> okay, let's get back to the wonderful. Wait, one last. Okay. Jen says ghosts are fancy soul clouds. Okay. Okay. Now it opens well, up. What about Obi Wan ghosts. Kenobi? Obi Wan Kenobi isn't a ghost. <laughs> So she, he is literally a force ghost. Okay. Oh, so. Laura, Laura's got the science. Some ghosts are clouds, but not all clouds are ghosts. No, I think that wraps it up. That I think that's that. <laughs> Ooh, Twister. Oh, the Twister's ultimate. not sentient. It's not a sentient yeah. cloud like the others, we didn't but it's okay. we, we didn't, didn't say. specify. But it forms that's, like from the cloud. That's the best right? one. It comes down. Yeah. So there you go. Yeah, but it's, it's, it's a cloud. Is a cloud. It, it, no, it is. A I cloud. love it. Twister is a cloud. It's just not sentient. You know what I mean? Absolutely. Yeah. I like that one. That that might Can we be. We talk about how Twister one. side sidebar. How in Twister they had to go through each category. Like the each category of tornado happened in order. Like here's a category one. <laughs> this one's a right. category two. And they happened in order. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Let's talk about Twister, Twister next. Too, right? you know Twisters. Movie? The trailer came out Twisters? for Twisters. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> That's next episode. We're going to do Twister. And and all we are definitely doing Twisters. Yeah. yeah. And you know, oh, Liza. Sharknado. Yeah, that's is that a, good a cloud? One. That is that. Well, I mean, if it's a tornado. Well, it's a NATO. So the NATO <laughs> no, I mean... represents a cloud. Laura says a cloud does not need to be self-aware to be a jerk. Yeah, just ask Cent <laughs> uh, Middle America. They could tell yeah. you that. <laughs> Steve Nara said the real twist is someone cared enough to make a sequel. To it's not that they cared enough. It's that they were dumb enough to think it needed a sequel. Because when that movie came out, I it's loved like the it. The story's been told. Yeah, story's we, been we told. don't need it anymore. Like, be literally careful, Mike. it's all the tied up in a bow people. have you seen the trailer <laughs> oh are they oh. all good pe good guys as long they're as they're like, all no, hot. They're hot they're like you know beautiful people fighting okay. the, the tornadoes mm -hmm. okay so are oh, they and yeah they're the good guys right? they Wait. must be they must be right because they're good because the they're rule. good looking yeah exactly. right, right, that's the right. rule <laughs> okay are we gonna get back what are we to talking about green movie? lantern okay speaking okay. of cloud villains Aralax. let's get back Parallax is like the greatest cloud villain ever. 
or not. Uh, in the yeah, top five. We were trying to dig out favorite parts. I don't think. Oh, we... right. Okay. Favorite parts. Um, well, I mean, Blake Lively's hot. So, like, anytime she's on screen, she I'm is happy. beautiful. Yeah. <laughs> she's easy to watch. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, okay. Easy old the, eyes. I'm going to really stretch this, but I think he made, when he had to use his imagination to, like, use, you know, to save people for the first time and he made a matchbox track, that was cute, I guess. Mm. I thought I'm was, really looking. Like, I guess I'm I don't stretching. really like the Green Lantern because I thought it was all every time he used his powers, it was dumb. It was, I, I, like, I it did, was but I as but I I actually kind of did like the end where he pod raced with the jet car with the jet the the fighter yeah. jets the pod racing yeah. fighter jets. I was like, uh, this is dumb, but I actually yeah. kind of like it. Like, yeah, I don't they were know. trying to make it. They were trying to make it whimsical and playful and fun, to like people would have fun with it. And I think it fell a little flat, but it was cute. It was okay. I'm, I'm sorry. I might introduce another tangent. The do power, it. Do tangent, it. The power of tangent. imagination. <gasps> the power of imagination. Is that what we call this? Imagination. The... So is Willy right. Wonka? Is he Green Lantern power? <laughs> yeah. Because the stuff he invents, there's just no way a, a human being can invent that, right? Well, no, but he yeah. invents it. He doesn't will it into being with his thoughts. So yeah, but yeah. how do you make so you you make someone float with a candy? Yeah. He you figured say, yeah, out how like, to do yeah, it. Of course. You, you can his was that. more his was more exploitation and no empathy. That was yeah, his power. <laughs> that was his superpower. Exactly. What about the tunnel though? The 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 weird tunnel with the weird vision. That was uh, all of that I think could have been explained. Smoke and mirrors. Yeah. I think it's mirrors. yeah, I think it's all I, I I feel like it's all engineering, whether or not it's 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 whimsical and unrealistic engineering. It's still yeah. it's not like he just thinks it and brings it into being. You know what I mean? Like, I feel like there's other movies that have this trope or like imagination and playfulness or whatever as a weapon, like something that is, or as a force. I feel like there's other movies like that. It's, it's, it feels familiar, but I, I mm. felt like it, it was okay. It was okay. And I think I saw what they were going for and it was cute, but like, I feel like I've seen it before better. But I couldn't tell you where, so maybe it wasn't. Wait, what are we talking about again? Are we still talking (laughs) about about using imagination as a weapon, or like using your imagination as a power? You know. Yeah, I mean, I don't know. You thought thought it was silly, Mike? How was you? I thought it was silly. silly. Like, I really didn't like the match, the the matchbox car, like the the Hot Wheels track. I yeah, I I was thinking Harry Potter. Like, you know what I thought in the yeah. yeah. Actually, what I was thinking about with Harry Potter was the fight between uh, Dumbledore and and uh, what's his face, Uh, Mm -hmm. Voldemort. In yeah. what is that number five or something like one of those? Yeah, yeah, that was that was a pretty good fight where like they were really kind of uh, and tell you the truth, kind of the uh, the fight between um, Doctor Strange and Thanos in Infinity oh Wars. Doctor Strange and all of those his all the Doctor Stranges all of the the guys that have where are they from the the. Sanctum, Doctor Sanctorum. Strange movie, yeah, yeah, yeah. Gangrel like they're all using or... their, but those are right. like there's pre-existing spells <clears throat> right. that they can jump exactly. to. Same so, thing with Harry Potter. When yeah, exactly. Form and and that's that. But I'm just saying that's the closest I can I can really get to to that because they actually create them out they of do. nowhere. Camertage. Yes. Camertage. Yeah, and I think that I mean I think they had a lot that they could have worked with that fell mm-hmm. flat. Like the idea that you are. That the only thing that you really need to, you know, to protect people, to be successful, to be powerful is limited by your imagination. What right. can you think of? And that, that's a powerful message. Like everything is limitless. As long as you can imagine it, you can do it and you can win. But like it fell short. Well, know? what I what I will say, it's kind of funny to think that not only so <laughs> this this superhero succeeds when he can use his imagination really well, right? Mm-hmm. And if maybe if they had used their imagination a little bit more, you know, better they when writing the it, <laughs> the movie yes. could have done better. Yes. You know what I mean? Like, uh-huh. it's all, oh. it goes full circle. <laughs> John Galgano said the sorcerers, but the, and I don't, I never saw that, but it does remind me of Sword in the Stone. It's the animated film, and the two wizards are, the wizard is battling a witch, and they're turning each other, they're turning themselves into different creatures to battle each other. That's what it reminded me of, and they, 
Like one is a bird and then it turns into a cat to like right. get the bird. And then one turns into a dog to chase the cat. And like it kind sure. of had that feeling, but it wasn't as well done. Yeah. But yeah, I think, yes, I yeah, think. I, and I, uh, I will... Steve Nara says to your comment, zing, <laughs> about <laughs> if they had better imagination, they would have won the movie. <laughs> I just wish we had seen more of him training to become. Like, oh, it, it felt Wonder like Twins, it, yeah. Like that Wonder was Twins a... did that. Oops. Oh. Uh, oh, Laura Kila says, "Yeah, Dream Lu- Dream versus Lucifer and Sandman." Beer Thirty says, "Wonder Twins." Um, yeah, and Steve Nara says, "Zan and Zana." So yeah, it has been done before, but I do think it. I think I think it fell short with the potential that was there. Yeah, I'd have to agree. Um, yeah. Also, fun fact: I noticed in this movie, Amanda Waller. She oh grew right. Cabrini Green, which is where. Um, Candyman. Oh, yeah. did she say that? It, it was in the when he read her mind. It was a quick little flashes, oh, and Cabrini Green was prevalent. That's kind of cool. It's also where Good Times takes place. Mm-hmm. So there you go. There's a yeah. connection. Does it really? <laughs> Jimmy Walker. I was say Good Times, the TV show. <laughs> Amanda Waller. Yeah. <laughs> no kidding. So okay. fun fact. Good times. <laughs> yeah. That's interesting. That is interesting. Um, so I mean, I, I cannot think. Uh, I'm trying. I'm really trying to think of a of a moment that I enjoyed. Look, I'll, um, I'll well, like, there, there well, were some a, decent moments. I can give you some mm, decent moments. Here's an interesting it. point of view that maybe they picked the wrong Green Lantern character to 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 Kyle, explore in this Kyle film. Kyle Rayner is Green Lantern. That I think that there was. Um, oh, oh, oh! That's like a Green a, Lantern. Okay. Yeah, a Green okay, Lantern. So, it, like from it. the comics, Not the different Hal characters. Jordan. Yeah, yeah. Right. and that you know that it's and possible John they just Stewart picked is the other one. Yeah. Mm-hmm. John Stewart. That maybe John just... Stewart. Yeah, <laughs> that's great. From Daily Show. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> I said the same dumb joke. <laughs> Wouldn't it be awesome, with John Stewart? For the... <laughs> It would be. <laughs> oh man! Oh my that gosh! Would be great. Oh, yeah, I think Lordy. it's. I think that's definitely a possibility that they had the elements but put in the wrong, the wrong Green Lantern, and that maybe the fighter pilot one was not the one to choose. Maybe there was a different that would have had a better story. I think. <clears throat> I think I remember Kyle Rayner was like a comic book artist or something. He would have had a better imagination to draw from draw from get it anyway i think he was i think if i'm then they wouldn't have been able guys, to co- they wouldn't have been able to copy top gun if they did that that's so. true <laughs> oh that's they're what, like and i think i guess we're stuck with hal jordan yeah. because this is top my, gun and i don't know what else to do. i don't know what, what else to write. Yeah. you gotta check that box so yeah my oh. my green lantern knowledge is very slim in terms of the comics but yeah i believe that there are that that might have been a better character if that's the one i'm thinking of that might have been a better character to pull from because again that power of imagination would have been because of the in this one like he sees his nephew's little racetrack and that's why right. he does that like he's right. he's pulling off of things he said it's not really in his imagination he's just remembering things right he's getting inspired by things he's already seen which is not really imagination it's just pulling off your memory so oh thank you so steve nara says you're correct autumn kyle rayner was a graphic artist so yeah having an artist turn into a superhero i think is a much more interesting story than a fighter pilot as a superhero like mm-hmm. come on and, th- and then well just with the direction they chose uh because he had mental trauma <clears throat> your mind is your weapon it felt like mm-hmm. more than just fear like right the mental blockage of what happened to him trauma itself you have yeah. to overcome that to be able to clearly like imagine a trampoline yeah <laughs> or, or, right, and I think or a that, giant rocking you know, sock and robot, you know, which is I do think an artist movie. would be more equipped to be a better Green Lantern, partly because they do have to overcome a lot of self doubt and fear and anxiety to be an artist for a living to put yourself out right. there like that. The you mask have to be able to... is probably the greatest imagination. Oh, have. there you go, oh, the mask. Yeah. There you uh-huh. go. Yeah. yeah, that's a good one. And that actually, that blew to my what mind. you're saying, though. Uh-huh. With Stanley Epkis, he was, you know, a fan of, like, cartoons or whatever. Mm-hmm. And therefore, his mask was over the top. A Tex Avery yeah. cartoon. So. Yeah. So, uh. So, go on. No, you were, were telling not... us the best parts of this movie, Troy. Yeah. That's oh. Um, I like his, uh, the, what's the lantern 
uh, oath, the brightest day. Oh yeah, mm-hmm. the like, when yeah, he yeah. recited that at the near the end, he was oh yeah struggling against yeah, yeah that was, the pollution that was cloud. That was good. I mean, Ryan Reynolds he gives a good performance. He's not. It's not like he's bad in it. It's just yeah, he's not. He's not in a very good well. Movie. I feel like they yeah. Script. I felt like they didn't like the script didn't do him justice. I felt like he could have. He felt like the correct choice if right. it was in a was better movie. Yeah, he was underused. Exactly. If it was yeah. just a better movie, I don't think Mike I had Lively anything to do with. is a great actress too. She was totally underused. It was just yeah, like, absolutely. Underused. I'm the pretty. Like, I'm pretty and I'm smart. Exactly. Okay. You know. Yeah, I don't I know. Think I have a nitpicky thing too that has Let's really hear bothered me. When the parallax is pulling, the, when the, the Green Lanterns are coming to fight him and he's pulling their fear out of them and <clears throat> surviving off of and like thriving off of that, mm-hmm. uses it to escape. The concept of pulling out their essence is represented oh. by a golden skeleton. Oh, so, yeah. I, I I'm like, so that. your skeleton <laughs> is your true essence? <laughs> like, why wouldn't it have been like a soul or like an, you know what I mean? Like a wispy thing or sure. like an outline of them, but like their skeletons coming out? Like, I love that's it the best. I love it when bones. it's your soul, but your your fully clothed soul. <laughs> right. <laughs> right. The soul of your plaid. Exactly. Like, along just with? see some glowing naked <laughs> people get yanked out. I think yeah. that would have been we- appropriate, but skeletons were weird like what what are we saying here in this movie that yeah, your skeleton I, I, I is your true that. essence that was... <laughs> it's weird yeah i mean that didn't bother me i mean I, it didn't bother me too much like i didn't even notice it i guess because i was so not invested like and that was such a minor thing right. i just didn't and also i didn't care, care if those guys died i'm like kill yeah. them all i don't care they exactly. didn't earn me I caring a positive thing uh, okay yeah am i pronouncing the planet right oa is oa oa is that the yeah, the, I think so. the head, oh, headquarters. Uh, yeah. So yes. I thought the creature variety and design was pretty cool. Yeah. Like I'm not talking about the actual effects. Right. Of course the effects are dated. Yeah. But the you know, they really went with the bizarre and you know, it wasn't just a dude in a suit like some of the Right. They, they weren't very, humanoid. Like, they weren't just right. humanoids. They were all over. I mean, there was like a a you know, giant flying bug you know what i mean that was a green lantern i I didn't want to leave that world and then they just went back to earth yeah Yeah. they did that kind of a shame uh a couple comments from the chats so steve says martin campbell's preferred lead was bradley cooper struggling Hmm. to picture him in that role yeah that would have been interesting and uh john galgano says i never feel like ryan reynolds becomes the character ryan reynolds is the character in everything he does you know I, I kind of have to agree. I'm trying oh, to yeah. think of a film he's done where he's... He was born for Deadpool. <laughs> yeah, he's Deadpool. I've been like, everything I remember seeing him in, you're, you know, I really liked him in um the the movie where he's the NPC character, the video game character. Oh, yeah. Uh, the guy, guy. guy. Free guy. Free guy. He was great in that, but again, he was Ryan Reynolds. He was Ryan, I mean, Ryan he Reynolds. Was Ryan he Reynolds. was a dialed down... Dialed like, down version of Ryan he was Reynolds. The, the, and then he, be- yeah. he turned into Ryan Reynolds. You right. know what I mean? Yeah. So no, no. Let's let's drill down it a bit because that's fascinating. Yeah. Do you think that's because is that due to his acting ability or the fact that his persona has so a... kind of eclipsed his yeah. actual roles that now that people he, write it's hard to a Ryan Reynolds him character. Away? Well, like, yeah. well get immersed. Or well, look at look at like feel? Hugh Jackman. Take Hugh Jackman. Like mm. when he was young and he was big, he all they always wrote his character exactly the same way. Mm-hmm. Flash forward to now, he is not. He is, takes on the persona of whatever role that he has to right. has to do, and he changes yeah. in each one. I mean, take uh, I don't know if you ever saw The Undoing. Take that character in The Undoing versus who he was in like Dungeons and Dragons. Like they couldn't right. be more different, and they're both great. Yeah, and and Ooh, it so might Hugh be Jackman. Hugh no, Jackman? I'm sorry, not Hugh Jackman. Um, uh, what's his name? What's his name? Can... Oh, uh. From Star Trek. No, from Star Trek. Not Chris the Pine. The Kirk guy, the, 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 the actor. No, the, 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 the old dude in... in uh... Jeremy Irons? Well, are, are you talking about... Are you talking about Morgan Dragon? Freeman? Are you talking about... <laughs> <laughs> just <laughs> say everyone. I'm stuff. just going to look it up for Sean Brian. Sean Connery. <laughs> Let's play a game. Who, who is Mike talking yeah, who about? Who is he talking about? Hugh Grant. Thank you. Hugh Grant. You. Hugh Thank Grant. You, Steve. 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 Ste
I do they, think when it they, that was that was a big yeah. they did a lot of that. You're and, right. He was that yeah. he was that bumbling, charming was British guy, guy for the same and time. Now he's completely different. And he yeah. can handle those roles just fine. But yeah. but you know who Ryan Reynolds is? He's right. Van Wilder. But do you think okay, now I think I mean that's I the that character they write for now. They write him pers- as Van Wilder. Van Wilder. When, yeah, no. because that's Is who that who he is he got, in real life? I don't think so. What like, is he acts that way? Did you what? feel the, the movie Spirited that we reviewed him in um, um, the, the Christmas movie? Uh huh. Oh yeah, he was he was Ryan you, Reynolds you there. Felt, yeah, you felt I he felt like he was him. Ryan Reynolds in that. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. And it was the thing is that ch- that character is very likable, very charming. So the question right. is, if that's just who he is in real life, and he did that in Van, Van Wilder and a couple other places, did people just continue to write? stories around that character and he for him uh, or does he not get any other option like is that all he can do does he only take movies like does he only get those offers does he get offers well, for movies that are against type and doesn't do them I, or I does know, he not like, get for, them for deadpool he did a lot of rewrites but i wonder if he does yeah. that a lot for his films like he's yeah. at a level now where he'll inject his own He's fine-tuned that character of Ryan Reynolds, and it's it's dialed in now. I mean, he's got right. a great, fully developed persona that he can put that persona in a bunch of different places. He does. He puts that persona in a bunch of different movies that are slightly different from each other, like Spirited and Deadpool and Free Guy. Those are all just different versions of that same True. persona, and it's successful, and people love it. So. And he makes a really good living and he gets to do all these great things. So like, why mess with it? But the yeah. truth is, it is the same character again. I feel that way about Sam Jackson to a degree. Like he's... Yeah. He's, he's always all, cool it, Sam Jackson. Sam yeah. Jackson, yeah. I mean, and uh, Ryan Reynolds is probably a better example of the extreme he can go. I mean, Sam and yeah. like Django and Chain and stuff, like he was a little bit more immersed in that. But still, it's still like, yeah. you know, the like, Samisms. The, that, mm-hmm. that like when you saw... Thing. <laughs> was it Matthew McConaughey who was in that Dallas Buyers Club? Mm-hmm. Is that his name? Mm-hmm. Okay. Like he was a totally different character. Right. Mm-hmm. And up until then, he'd been the same character kind of a lot. And then he started doing all and do, True Detective and all these other characters. And I'm wondering, like, is there a role like that for Ryan Reynolds? Will he'll go completely different and open it all up? Or does he not care because he doesn't need to because, you know, He's doing well and people love it. He has so much money. Like I know, like why would he? Unless he unless it matters. Unless he like he loses can. it all in yeah. you know the football team. <laughs> we'll see. Yeah. Well, yeah. I you watched that get... whole series. It was so fun. <clears throat> me too. Me you too. He did a great yeah. job of avoiding that. I think Johnny Depp early in his career, you know, coming from Twenty One Jump Street, he was mm. seen as the, the hot hunk. <laughs> and I think every film yeah. role he chose was out there. And and like Yeah. You right. know, Edward Scissorhands, he's going to put something on his face All or he'll do place. something yeah. super, you know, sure. independent like Dead Man. And like he he avoided that. I mean, yeah. you go see you see Johnny Depp in a film. Yes, it is Johnny Depp, but he's also but it's... immersed in the character. So, yeah, I think it's easier to separate the two. <laughs> Dwayne Mattinson says the real Ryan Reynolds is actually an 87 year old woman. So it's in a he. He's pulled a talented Mr. Ripley, sorry, Mr. Reynolds, and fooled us all, Steve. Nice. So, yeah. <laughs> okay, wait, we got a different Ryan. Could be in it. Yeah, could Beer be 30 awesome. said smoking aces was a different Ryan. I haven't seen that. I have, but it, I, I don't remember it. a long it. time yeah. ago. It was, you think it was different? I mean, you think it was the same? I, I, have, I have no idea. I mean, I, I would say he's probably right because he actually remembers the movie. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> John Delgano uh, says, I give him credit for making a career playing himself, but it doesn't inspire me to see anything he does anymore. You know what? It does the opposite for me. I know what I'm going to get. I know it's going to be fun. I mean, I totally see what you're saying, John, and I agree that if someone's kind of over that character, well, there's no I think reason it's... to see his movies, but yeah, right. I still I love it. I'll still watch anything he's in. But, you know, movies are like, it's like a, it's like a, a dish of food right sometimes you want comfortable pizza yeah exactly he is comfort food something more right. challenging you may go see yeah. you know uh the uh, caprio movie right you right may, right 
you know, can't go in a tire. And I think that might be our first <laughs> Troy okay, metaphor of the entire episode. Like I, we couldn't go a whole episode without metaphor man hitting it up. Wait, <laughs> we've got Steve Nara saying he's the Applebee's of acting. You know what you're going to get. Now that's yeah. a metaphor. Diarrhea, yeah, diarrhea. That's what you're going to get. <laughs> yeah. And Rubbish Bill says he's like fast and furious. You know what you're getting. Laura says Harrison Ford was like that to an extent when he was younger. He went for money making roles, not so much artistically challenging roles. You know, he, his his roles give him a lifestyle to be able to and, do what he wants. His, so like his, the, the the role where he made that divide was Witness. Did you guys ever see Witness? Yes. Oh yeah, that was that was yeah. cool. that was huge because he was really known for Indiana Jones and for mm-hmm. Han Solo. And then and I think un- he was nominated for Academy Award for that, right? And un Credited Vigo Mortensen was in Witness. Really? Yep. He was, was one he of the back. Really awesome? he, was, he was one of the Amish. Wow. Yeah. Nope. You know, I liked him in um, regarding <clears throat> Henry. It was one of the oh, first yeah. times where he was, was vulnerable, nice. like really vulnerable yeah. and not a big hero. That's a good. You know one. what I mean? He was a jerk, and then he got humbled, and then he had to mm-hmm. build himself up. And he was at no point a big hero. And that was to me, I really liked seeing that story. You, you know, the film no one ever talks about really is Mosquito Coast. I don't remember that. I don't think I've seen that one. He takes his family off grid. River Phoenix plays his son in that movie, which led to him being cast and crusade Mm. because he recommended River Phoenix to Spielberg. Okay. Because of that experience. Steve Mara says he thinks Blade Runner because it came before Witness was his first. uh... Hmm. Can I just point out how forgettable Green Lantern is that we keep not talking about it. <laughs> <laughs> like, we need something what, to talk a, about. It's a whatever yeah. of a movie. <laughs> yeah. You know? like it's, <laughs> One thing about Green Lantern I would like to bring up is uh, when he, when like they, he, I think it's when he first gets to Oa and they're put, I think it's when they're like putting the suit on him and you have Ryan Reynolds with like the lighting showing off his abs and the little, <laughs> and his little like, beautiful. like boxer briefs. And I'm just like, he's fucking beautiful ass dude. Yeah. Dude. They're like, ma- it's like him and, uh, him and Blake Lively. Like how many yeah. opportunities could we have to show how beautiful these people exactly, are? Exactly. Exactly. Uh, I, I, I made a note. There was a funny <laughs> line when, um, it was <laughs> Laura says together. clouds are better to talk about than Greenland. <laughs> anyway, uh, with uh, he he Tycho first showed up with the crash ship. He was like, this, Yeah, this yeah, alien guy. He gave me a ring, and he's like, He proposed to you, yeah, <laughs> that exactly. was good. I thought that was pretty funny. <laughs> that was pretty funny. And that also... ends my list of uh, there we go, positivity. There you go, that was it. Yep, it <laughs> was a couple of go. funny moments. Mm. Uh, I'm sure they. Yeah. I'm sure maybe it was 2011. Maybe they made some like Green Lantern popcorn tins. That was worth it. Maybe. Yeah. Probably. Well, you your, know what I wanted to ask. Got a Those are worth almost a dollar ninety nine on eBay now. <laughs> 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 almost. <laughs> I think uh, butter costs more. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> so. Um. Okay. Oh yeah. I was gonna say. Do you think this was this came out? I'm pretty sure at the height of like the 3d fit like craze right because yeah, that was. like during the like i i especially noticed during the hot wheel scene like stuff was just like flying at camera Ooh. yeah all the way <laughs> i was like come Whoa. on yeah. <laughs> dude it's like back it's then, right there <laughs> dude back then it was so every single yeah. movie you could not find a movie that yeah. wasn't in 3d it was so annoying the funniest thing for me now is watching movies from that era when they were leaning <coughs> into the 3D nature of it, and you have mm-hmm. something coming into camera, but you're not wearing 3D glasses, or you don't right. have 3D. Yeah. So it looks so Here, lame. have some soup, Autumn. <laughs> <laughs> what do you guys think? Yeah. <laughs> you know what is funny? So one of dumb. the one of the movies that used 3D, the 3D effect to the best, like I've ever seen it, was G Force. Do you remember G Force with the gerbils? Or the guinea pigs, and they were like super. They were like special agent guinea pigs. It's adorable. It's actually way better. (laughs) It's it's way better than Green Lantern. Uh, It's it is it is it is actually a a highly recommend if you want to watch a fun movie. A big bar though, way better than Green Lantern. (laughs) Yeah, yes, you're right. You're right. It's not a big bar. I mean, the film I took of my kids' sixth grade play is way better than. It's a oh well. 
It's just it's a smear a, of poop, not a pile. Okay? So, but so. let me tell you why the 3D was so good. So they did a lot of the stupid things in 3D, right? But one thing they did was when they rendered out the film, they rendered out black bars, right? Normally, you oh. just render out whatever. So they and would. They, so they would have like there's a lot of sparks and they have like these yeah. super gerbil ball like a guinea oh, pig ball would the sparks the would frame. like go out of the frame and I remember watching it going like what the hell I had because to take... they get you used to the bars yeah. thinking that's the edge of your screen and then exactly. they break the edge so that's I had to take clever. my I had to take my glasses off and I was like oh my god they are sending it into the black like that is yeah. absolutely brilliant Mike, and, what, what was your weed level when you watch this <laughs> what era did this come 100. out because there's a there's <laughs> early <laughs> Mike era. definitely definitely yeah. like yeah weed level okay, 1000 we got... yeah. okay all right we got, uh, Laura... contributed to the enjoyment. no no no, no 3d truly, movies truly, it, it actually did it like it was crazy i <laughs> we took off the glasses it. to watch it because now fast let's do we it review that well, in 3D. I don't, but I don't think they, yeah, that's all the thing. Do you have a 3D TV? Can we find it in 3D? Like, I don't oh, think they it, render it, that. So in only key. if you could see it in 3D. Only if you it wasn't saw the it. movie itself. It was exactly, just, exactly. Okay. If you saw it in 3D, I don't even, because I don't yeah. have a 3D TV. I don't, I probably wouldn't have the movie on. You Blu-ray don't? If Are I you did. a Corsi? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> right. <laughs> Sorry. And so, okay, we've got, and so we've got anyway, and, and, and okay, 3D I was, TVs are like, crying right now oh my I god i was just gonna say uh from the audience we've got laura kilo says piranha 3d and we got beer 30 said the birds 3d to me the first the one that birds. ever got me was uh jaws 3d back way back in the day didn't didn't Oof. care for it it was too scary did you see that in the theater do you remember seeing it in the theater uh, yeah I, I was think it, it was like no there was a tv event there was like oh. you could go to Blockbuster or you go to where the grocery store sure. or whatever and get the three D glasses and then they played it at like prime time. But that was the TV. color three D, right? When they would yeah, like do it the was two like colors. when you did the glasses with the red and blue. Yeah, yeah. And so, it was part three, I think that was my first three D. It was at home though, obviously. I was too young. But and anyway, Green Lantern, fine. right, the guys? The spears coming out of your face. <laughs> Whoa. The eyeballs popping out. Oh, Steve Nara says, yes, he got his glasses from 7-Eleven. Thank you. Sounds yes, you can right. go pick oh, them yeah, up somewhere. Right. Yeah. Uh, yeah, they did that so a few fun. times. I'm pretty sure there were multiple special uh, events, special nights, events yeah. like that with different movies. Uh, yeah, yeah, absolutely. Oh, okay. Laura Keela said, actually, there was a dinosaur movie I saw at a museum. Nothing was coming at you, but they used the 3D to create depth. Which was lovely in forest scenes. That's actually yeah. the best way to use it. In fact, one of the uh, the another the other movie that I thought was really good with 3D was the first Avatar, and they did mm. the same thing. They didn't really send make stuff depth. at you; they just made yeah. depth, and it was crazy. I remember when they're first getting to Pandora, yeah. and everyone's getting out of their pods and they're floating around in the spaceship, about to go down to the planet. It just it looked like it went on for miles, like inside that yeah. that ship. And I was like, holy shit, this is like because everyone was talking about like how good the 3D was for this movie. And so when I finally right. saw it, I was pretty blown away by you know what that movie was basically do. a great demo for 3D TVs, is what yeah, they did. A really exactly. expensive demo. I, I saw Beowulf, yeah. the, the CG Beowulf in uh, 3D, and that was oh. pretty amazing. <laughs> the whole sequence with the I don't know if you remember the bird or or is it the bird flies and it's the shot where it's tracking to the cave, right? And it follows this. Oh yeah, yeah. Different things like I just another forgettable movie. Out. So it's kind of hard for me to remember that exactly. That was... you know and we are talking forgettable movies tonight on Bald Guys and Bad. Now, I'll defend Beowulf. <laughs> Beowulf beyond the uncanny valley. If you get past that, it's actually mm. a good movie. In my mm, okay. Everyone's entitled to their own opinion. <laughs> no shit. <laughs> wait, 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 wait. <laughs> Said the guy in a review show. <laughs> uh, so let's uh, let's rate this sucker. What do you guys say? Should we rate it? Should we yeah, should we should we rate it? Anything any... else we can say about this? I can't uh... think. I think. Uh, let's see. Let's. I'll go through my notes real quick. Why does he have gray eyes and not green eyes when he gets a suit on? That was one <laughs> that thing was that so I wanted. I'm like, stupid. why is his eyes gray and not green? Like they should be green. <laughs> Sinestra, like the bad guy's eyes, Hector's eyes say, were yellow when he turned bad. And I was going to say, were all the Green Lantern's eyes that color? Because yeah, I don't stupid, feel like they right? were. Yeah. Uh, I was. I did note that he has the most douchey 
bachelor pad ever. Like that 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 his apartment was just as oh douchey God. as they come. Oh, wait, wait, one line. What, 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 okay, what's go ahead. The, just a general. It just had so a general feel general of douchiness. douchiness. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> general douchiness. Exactly. Okay. <laughs> you know, one thing, this is kind of messed up. I was like, why? Like when Hector's head gets like all gr- all grotesque, why does he start to kind of resemble Hopper from Stranger Things? Like, <laughs> he kind of did. did. But right? Hopper doesn't look gross or exactly. disfigured. Exactly. So what? But what somehow I thinking? thought the same thing. <laughs> it was really weird. It was really weird to me. <laughs> oh, I thought of one thing I did like about another good highlight. Okay, that's it. When he's wearing the mask and he's talking in the voice and she's acting for a second, like she's going along with it, then she's like, I know it's you. You. We've known each other our entire lives. You think I can't see your cheekbones and now I don't know it's you? I love that. Because it's so common in the movies where I'm like, come on. Because I put black. Yes, thank (laughs) you. (laughs) Can't tell it's him. I remember thank you, Daniel. That, that was perfect timing right it was there, buddy. Refreshing <laughs> that, that she didn't like fall for it. Yeah, I yeah, thought that was a fun. Was. It doesn't happen a lot in these movies when you know that the person should recognize them and they don't. Like do Batman have, movies. Do have, Come on. Do you have an image of uh, Peter Sarsgaard as the, the shorn scrotum villain? What Pretty sure that? he does. Yeah. No. Well, do you have him as a villain? Got, like he when he has a super oh, head when he's all movie, mutated and stuff. Yeah, the mutated head version. Because that was, yeah. Kong's Maybe not. Oh, darn. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Oh, Jin, Jin gave uh, the review is 3 out of 10. It is a movie. Okay. <laughs> so that's a, that's a 1.5. Yeah. So it's 1. like 5. when I would go, back when I was in college and I would um, go see people's, I was a theater major, so we'd go see people's plays. And then they, oh. when, you know, when it wasn't good. And then they come out. What'd you think? You'd be like, you were in a play. The <laughs> sets were so good. Your costume was great. I, you oh, were, you enunciated so well. I could hear everything you said. <laughs> that is pretty funny. That, yeah, that's what this is. This was a movie. Yep. yep I mean, yep, everybody yep. got together and they made it happen. And they, like, they finished <clears> it. <throat> and they, yep. they did it. <laughs> Not easy to but, make a movie. But, but, but we're, anyone... not saying, we're not like like the pirate movie. We were like, you know what? They went for it. It became a, a beautiful <laughs> yeah. masterpiece. Right, right. Yes. We're not saying that about this though, right? We're no, just... it's not a beautiful masterpiece. It's a forgettable yeah. masterpiece. Yeah. <laughs> Some people got paid get it? To, Me- to do to, to light the set. Do you get it? All... We got <laughs> it. Good. We, we, we got it, Autumn. We got it. I don't know if you got it. I'm going to type it out so you can see it. <laughs> oh, yeah. Laura says, uh, when Spidey talks to Aunt May in the first Spidey movie, I was like, she 100% knows who he is. She knows her nephew's voice. Yeah, she's, right. Like, she's, yeah, she's raised him, right? Or, been li- or has been raising him. Like, she knows what he sounds like. Come on. That is, I would have to agree with that. Please. Oh, oh, Steve Nara. Green Yom turn. That was a good one. That was a good one. Man. Wait, do you, do you think yeah. anyone figured out that uh Christian all guys Hill and bad dad was, jokes? Was, uh, <laughs> so did, did Christian Bale's Batman fool anyone? Oh my voice God. like this. Just take my voice like this. Yeah. <laughs> we all joke about it, but the, yeah. the citizens of Gotham really known that that is actually Bruce Wayne. I will never let anyone know my real identity. Is that is like the is that the only way? But you know the Ben Affleck Batman had a modulator, what? right? So Why he didn't kinda... he do this instead? Like then nobody will know who he is. <laughs> <laughs> now that's unexpected. <laughs> hey guys, <laughs> you will ruin the day. <laughs> uh, yep, sorry, Paul. <laughs> yeah, Paul. Paul's here in the chat saying, "I just landed, and this is how I find out I've been replaced." Yep. You're out, buddy. <laughs> oh oh man. my gosh! So, does All anyone right. else have any notes that uh, that we missed that you want to go over? Troy, you got any? Autumn. Mm-hmm. I don't, oh well, uh, I don't know if it's a fun fact, but this pretty much because Lantern was supposed to be the start of their DC <clears throat> cinematic universe. And oh, like, was it? Yeah, like okay, let's not do that again. And then they pivoted to Man of Steel. So that was the official launch of. Paul says, you guys are talking about the one character I'm obsessed with. Sorry, bud. 
himself. <laughs> himself. <laughs> oh, <laughs> <no>. <laughs> uh, uh, Lord Kilas. Yeah. Wait, um, can, can we Photoshop uh, Paul's hair on Hector? Yeah, there we yes. go. Yes. Let's do it. Uh, I want to but on the, on, yeah. the mute, on the mutated Hector, though. <laughs> Jim says, uh, I'm sorry, Paul, but corporate has decided your hair care budget is out of control, so we're replacing it with these two bald guys. <laughs> and now with something completely different. Oh, man. No hair at all. Uh, oh, okay. my gosh. All right, well, let's all read right, it. Want to read it? What, what's, what's, what's the ratings? Ooh. Who wants to go first? I think Autumn should go first. Yes, Autumn. I'm gonna. Okay. I'm going to give it at the uh, at, at the choice. Okay. I'm gonna give it <clears throat> two out of ten. Oh, five. Ooh, no, it's out of five. Eye contacts. It's out of, no, it's out of out five. Of, fine. One out of five. Uh, weird blue eye contacts. Gray. Aren't they gray? They're gray. Grayish blue. Yeah. Are they blue? They like unnecessary, gray. unnecessary eye contacts. There you go. I thought it was okay. just my one. TV. Like, no, it was like they were like gray. It was freaking okay. weird, dude. Yeah. It's they like he like, was electrocuted. Well, why wouldn't they turn green? Like that's what I'm saying. <laughs> like he's Green Lantern. Like you're gonna change his freaking eyes. Change Wait, him green. It's a choice, right? So yeah. Like that's just right there on the table, and they chose to pivot <laughs> from the obvious. Oh, oh man. Oh my gosh. Yeah. Okay, what about yeah, you, Troy? Um, what are you gonna? Yeah. You wanna want me to go? Yeah, you go. Um, I'm still coming up with what I'm going to call it. He, she, you, uh, she gave it a one. She gave it a one. one. I give it a one. Yeah, I'll, I'll give it. I'll give it two because solely, mainly because of Mark Strong Sinestro. I really definitely. And Oa, I thought the Oa designs were okay, but I'll give it a two. Shorn scrotum heads out of five. <laughs> <laughs> but like badly shorn, like with an old razor, <laughs> right? Oh, man. Shorn, Lots of cuts. <laughs> shorn scrotum Oh, head. lordy. I am going You think Peter Skarsgård looked in the mirror one day in full makeup and was like, what the fuck am I doing? Like? <laughs> what? <laughs> it's like, how, how did I get, I get here? here? Exactly. <laughs> What choice does, did I make? He fired his agent. Under he fired his Adler, agent. And he here was like, I am looking yes. at yeah. a, a ball. He's like, I yes. might be stuck doing this movie, but I am firing my agent right now. <laughs> you guys, you guys, Steve That's said so Paul weird. missed the cloud talk. Get it? Paul missed the cloud oh, talk. Do you yeah. get it? Yeah. Also, we got Beer 30 nice. giving a rating. Two, Two abs, abs out of six. Out of six. Nice. Everybody at home, please come up with what your rating scale is and then what your rating is. Yes, Thank you. Thank absolutely. You. Mm -hmm. Okay, so now I got to choose one. This is this is this is hard in movies. It's the part that I usually cut out the podcast when Mike's thinking of one. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> that is absolutely true. Can I get up and go take second. a break? Yeah, yeah. absolutely, <laughs> absolutely. Okay, okay, I'll go. I'll be Start quick. I'll be quick. Boiling. Okay. How about I'm gonna give it? I'm gonna give it. Two out of five, um, uh, you know, side lit, so, uh, fuzzy, uh, like soft focus Ryan Reynolds ab shots. That's what I <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, okay. I'm gonna do another one. I'm gonna change mine oh, to okay. two because you're right, it. but two um, self tanning spray bottles. Out of there five. you go. Yeah, I one for Blake and team. one for Ryan. <laughs> right. <laughs> I'm glad we worked it in. Oh, man. Yeah, why were, like, you know, oh. he wasn't as bad as she was. Like, she was so tan. Because, like, I've seen her in a lot, you know, I've, I've seen her in a lot of things. You know what I mean? And she is never the tan one. <laughs> She is always the very white one. And the director's so like, more tan, more tan. Actually, you're like, yeah, I'm like, have you seen Donald Trump lately? <laughs> what, take that, and like, turn it up. Yeah, exactly, exactly. <laughs> oh man, just yeah. yeah, yeah. Then that's uh, I think that's that's about it. I think we did it, guys. Yeah, I think I don't we know. did it. What's our first. That's about? our first. Uh, our first guest guest uh yeah. episode and a wonderful guest it, it was. yeah really guest was. Plural, all you guys thanks for uh <laughs> facilitating this of course do you want to do you want to wrap up your show so i can that's take basically how we wrap it wheel. up that's, that's how we wrap it up <laughs> yeah we have like a we have like a a a, zi a stinger that we put on the end half oh the time, gotcha we, gotta, we come Paul up says, with that at uh, the end 
Live content isn't so easy, huh? Shut up, Paul. <laughs> yeah, get out of here, Paul. <laughs> what do you know? Yeah, you only showed up for the last five minutes anyway, so it's not going to be yeah. live for you. We were amazing for the rest of it. <laughs> Could Paul just mm. pop on and be combing his hair? Like, just... Yeah. What he's doing that? his weekly hair routine. That's why he's not here. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Exactly. You think All right, you know I'm not gonna... to schedule it during this time. Yeah, you know I mean? come on. <laughs> All right, then I'm going to take back control of the show. Are you guys ready? You take, yeah. Here we go. We're going to go out one level from the inner show to back to the outer show. Here we go. All right, guys, and we are back. That was Bald Guys and Bad Movies doing their entire episode within our episode because we are just that cool or something. I don't know what we'd call that. Showception is what we call it. So we are going to be back here next week. Well, we aren't. I'm going to be back here next week with Paul and Alex and maybe Daniel. I'm not sure. We're going to be talking about the, the uh, top five romantic comedies by Box Office, which were pretty interesting. Ooh. So we're going to be breaking them all down. And it was interesting doing it by Box Office because there were some unexpected ones. Hitch is on that list, which Hitch. I thought was really weird. Like is some Captain that I Curly's thought... Mandolin on that list? No, I think it was, it I was, was definitely to go to that years ago. So, just wondering. Um, yeah. my big fat Greek wedding is on that list. Oh, I love um, that movie. It's like one of my I think favorite. It was movies. what was it? What was it, Paul? Pre um, Pretty Woman, I think, was on there. Yeah, that's a good one. And yeah. Hitch, which I thought was weird. You know, I and... actually kind of liked Hitch, to tell you the truth. It's I was surprised fine, but... that I watched it, and I, yeah. I was surprised that I liked it as much as I did when I saw it. Yeah. It's fine. So we're going to be breaking that down next week. Um, and we will be back for the next every Thursday at 6 p.m. Pacific, 8 p.m., 7, no, 9 p.m. Eastern, now into the foreseeable future. So make sure that you guys are subscribing. Oh, I'm going to follow Daniel's lead. We're going to join our Facebook group, Fandom Socialites. That is our official home away from home where we do, we have daily conversations about all kinds of stuff about pop culture. Also, make sure you are subscribing to this channel, YouTube at Fandom Social. Turn on your notifications so that you know when we go live. You can also go to our website, FandomSocial.com. We've got our blog there. We theoretically update that all the time with uh, channel news, but that's my job, so it happens once every few months. You can also email us at hello at FandomSocial.com to file all your complaints with Paul for his hair maintenance. Um, and also, you guys can check out Bald Guys and Bad Movies at their website, baldguysbadmovies.com. On there, you guys, if I'm not mistaken, have a full list of everywhere they can listen to your podcast, right? Yep. Correct. Why don't you run it down for us? Where can you listen to your podcast? Uh, you can listen My to our podcast uh, on on what Spotify, on Apple Podcasts, mm -hmm. on Google Podcasts, if that's still around, yeah. I'm pretty sure. Um uh they buzzsprout is is who mm. we use to disseminate it to everywhere so you can listen to it there yeah. um you can listen I to it radio, on amazon music it's everywhere yep. you guys it's literally everywhere, everywhere. like pretty much everywhere. Everywhere. Yeah, i'm looking at it right now it's there everywhere. you go check your local listings yeah oh, it's like your favorite Paul... rash it just spreads <laughs> exactly Paul came in uh with the list <clears throat> of the five that we're going to be talking about which are the top five box ah. office which i thought was really crazy hitch okay Ooh, pretty woman yeah. what what women, what women want? want do you remember that it well was... my dad worked on that actually did he really yeah that's the one I with thought... mel gibson right yes and yeah, helen yeah, hunt my dad worked on it yeah that's crazy because it to me I I would never have put it in the top five of romantic no, comedies of all time, not. but apparently for my box office it is. Also, something about Mary and yeah. my big fat Greek wedding. So those I mean, are those, the films we're going to be talking about. Yeah, three of those are pretty pretty. You know, yeah, I'm not surprised they're up there. Yeah, but a couple I was surprised about. So we're going to yeah. be talking about that. Um, None we'll of the eight ones. One. None of like the big '80s like uh, romantic yeah. comedies. Oh, except for Pretty Woman. You know the one I was really surprised about is like when Harry met Sally or Sleepless in Seattle or yeah, you've, right. got, you've got mail. But apparently yeah. those were maybe really popular, but not box office top five. Maybe so, yeah, Pretty yeah. One was, was 1990. Shocked. I thought it was oh, was yeah. it? Okay. Yeah. yeah. I wonder it. if that all right. up. The, I know well, we're going to be watching time. it. Why don't it you watch all five things. movies before next Thursday? Then you can join us live in the chats and you can tell us what you think. Got it. Sounds good. Awesome. Sounds All good. right, guys. Thank Paul's you, pushing everybody. us out here. 
<laughs> yeah, Paul's like, oh, my okay, <laughs> bye, guys. <laughs> Thank you, everybody who joined us live. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Join us all on all of our social channels. We are on Twitter. We are on Instagram. And our TikTok is now live and active. So please go over to TikTok, find us there, and follow us for all of our great, amazing content. And uh, thanks again to Mike and Troy for joining us. You guys were great. We'd love to have you back again in the future. And uh, as always, everybody, like what you like, love what you love, don't be a jerk, I think is how Paul ends it. <laughs> and uh, we'll see you next time. Thanks so much, everybody. Bye. <laughs> thanks, yeah, Troy. Yeah, he, he waited right <laughs> for the perfect <laughs> moment. What a jerk. <laughs> I thought you were going to do it.